Hey everyone, James here again. Welcome to a brand new episode of Inside Music. Now we don't usually do video podcasts, but given the state of the world today, a lot more people are home and so we decided we'd give it a shot. So what you're about to see is a conversation that I had with my friend Mariel of Best X promoting her new EP, Good at Feeling Bad, which is due out May 22nd on No Sleep Records. You can still stream the audio version of this podcast on SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, and all major podcast platforms. And if you want to be on the show, if you have any questions about the show, comments, feel free to hit me up. It's james at holix.com. That's H-A-U-L-I-X.com. Now, that's all I really have to share with you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy my conversation with my pal, Mariel. So you were up early this morning watching reality TV? Yes, I was. I was watching Vanderpump Rules. I have never seen that show. Dude, you would love this show. I think. I don't know. Sell sell me. Okay. I'll sell it to you. It's um, basically a bunch of people who aspire to become like... Musicians, models, actors, but they never became anything ever. Mm-hmm. After 10 years, you thought like maybe they would, but they didn't. They just became, you know, they were, they're still waiters. So it's like what happens when you don't make it except you have to try to ignore that they're reality stars now. So mm-hmm. they're like not anything. So I just like, I like that. Right before quarantine hit, we worked a uh, Stasi. is that her name? Yeah, uh, I love Stassi. We worked one of her live shows and it was sold She's out. She's one of the only ones who's actually something. It was like, uh, she, it was weird. She quit being, she quit like working at a restaurant. Mm. Well, like she doesn't author. need to. She's selling a ton of tickets. Yeah, that's amazing. I don't know what she does live though. Not much. Um she doesn't really tell jokes. She brought out some of the other cast members. They played like party games like Truth or Dare, Never Have I Ever and stuff like that. As the audience watched, they sang karaoke, stuff like that. That's weird. I always wondered what like those, I don't know, like YouTubers or whatever do. That's it, basically. I mean, it was, it was like two hours of show. People left throughout it, but like everyone was so drunk. Like it was very, very drunken audience i'm flipping my phone around love it i keep like i'm sorry i keep like touching the <laughs> i'm not gonna okay. zoom it's all right neither am i, I i'm i'm learning <laughs> as i've been working on this the uh the addiction show a little bit i've had to do more and more zooms to like recreate the in-person experience um and it's always awkward it's always awkward 100 percent of the time this actually is working pretty well. It's much better than my family one, which is like 20 people screaming at the same time. Yeah, That's why I turned it to Mar-a-Lago Lago because I was so bored in the family one and I felt like I had to be there. Um, but I just like, I was only bored because I just can't hear what anyone's saying. And so I just turned it to Mar-a-Lago Lago to see if anyone noticed. And only my mom did. But she was also sitting right next to me. So she kind of knows because I was like, oh, I'm changing my background. Yeah, I have like um, a list of good backgrounds. Brittany uses a lot of them when she does her meetings. She's in Bob's Burgers or The Simpsons or The X-Files. I'm not that well-versed in it yet. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the record. So we are, what are we, like 10 days, I guess, roughly, from the album coming out, EP coming out? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> I know that this is not what you pictured when you pictured yourself 10 days away from releasing the new material, but how's, how's it feeling nonetheless? It's not, not what I pictured. I mean, there was always a chance that I was doing nothing, I guess, but I definitely planned to, you know, have things this summer and stuff. And like, you know, we had planned, we were, we were in the process of planning like a tour through Europe and like, you know, the dates that you were going to help me with and like those ones in the Midwest, like the Midwest one and then the one here. And then we were doing ones, we were going to do ones on the East West coast. And so that is all canceled. I was like, all right guys, we're finally going back at it. We're going to go to Europe for the first time. It'll be great. 
And then a week after we started that, we had like our first practice and then everything closed forever. And now like a European tour, like, God, am I even able to afford it? Like after losing like, you know, one of my jobs and like, I don't know, like when am I gonna feel safe being a potential vessel for disease through an entire like region of the world? Yeah. That seems uh, that seems tricky, especially I was I was thinking about this the other day because they say that if you travel overseas, you'll have to do like 14 days of quarantine on both sides of it. So like when you get there, 14 days before you can start, and then when you come back, 14 days before you can go back to life. So like you have to add an extra month to your European travel expenses. Yeah, but then each country probably is like if you're coming from that country, you have to be two weeks here. So mm -hmm. it's just like that's a no. That's a no. Right but you know <laughs> Europe might end up opening up a lot quicker than we do yeah but so. I don't want to get sick just because they open up doesn't mean that it's okay <laughs> what about <laughs> drive-in tours could you like start a, a join like a you know prairie home companion traveling drive-in tour across America well my van right now is going in the trash um <laughs> but even driving it's just what if I get it and then I go to a show and then I meet like all of our fans and then they all get it. like, that would be horrible. That would be like the worst thing. It would be, it, it just seems so selfish to think about touring right now. So that is definitely something I'm putting off until it's okay again. Yeah. And I like, I love the idea of a drive-in concert and we've been kicking around maybe how we could do one or like sponsor one or something like that, like a drive-in performance, a singular one. But I just can't imagine that the, the money would be good enough to justify like an ongoing tour. You'd have to have so many have artists to bring people out. Have you seen drive-in DJ set? Mm -hmm. The video from the drive-in? It looks like my personal hell. Being trapped <laughs> in a car with like strobe lights and like smoke machines and just people honking their horns. Yes, that's like a nightmare situation. And it look, again, it looks so expensive, like all that CO2, the strobes, and all of it's for nothing because people are just in their cars, not interacting with that. Yeah. Maybe I'll go to a drive-in movie, though. But also, we have streaming now, so what's the point? Well, the point is to eat, a, eat popcorn inside your car. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, I think I've had a lifetime of eating in the car, though. Like, other people need to catch up to me. <laughs> you are in a unique position to have eaten in your car more often than most people have. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk. So I was reading the story in Rolling Stone yesterday, and it was about how all the record labels now are, like, scrambling to reinvent album marketing because they realize that just putting someone on the road is no longer the viable option so for you what's it been like trying to get the word out about the new record coming as soon as it is amidst all this because i imagine two months ago when literally you and i were talking about the record coming out we had all these plans in place so what has been like the hard pivot you've had to make like what have you done what's worked what's not been working what's it been like well i think i've always tried throughout all of our releases to have like a strong at home marketing plan anyway. Um, and the road always in my mind was like the thing that was the addition to it. Um, even if we spent most of our life on tour. Um, so I, I don't really know yet. I know it's two weeks away, but I'm kind of a last minute gal. So I'm trying to figure out what to do exactly. I don't really know. We're having a listening party on the day that it comes out using Discord, which I've never used before, but the label said that they've used Discord and it worked well for a listening party. Um, and that's not true. I tried to get on Discord once because there was like some kind of local Pokemon Go chat, but I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> um, but he said it's easy, he's gonna set it up, so. We're doing that. I did a collaboration with Stay Home Club, which I think is just my favorite merch that we've made ever. Um, and I've been trying to do as many virtual like concert things as I can, but like it's just not the same without my band. 
nights, you know, like me just playing by myself is great and all, but there's only so many times I feel like I can do that in a row to just the general internet. Cause it's like, if you're playing to the internet, it's not like you're going to one city and you're playing, it's like you're playing to everyone at once. So like how many times in a row can you do that? Like the same thing. Absolutely. And we've been talking about it internally what artists can do and i've seen some like bands that are going on virtual tours that's like a term i keep hearing and i think that that's dumb because of what you just said like there's nobody that's like well they were on rolling stone today but i only read vice so i'm going to wait till they do the vice date of their live stream tour like that's not how it functions i do think that there's like some people that have found good ground on like twitch doing thematic ones i know anthony green has been doing like i'll play this album or i'll do a covers exclusive night and stuff but again like that's cool there's there's only so much runway right like before long you're gonna run out of songs yeah and i only know how to play about a third of my songs because i'm a little out of practice because we only got to have one practice like we went on tour three years ago we played like a couple like a few shows here and there between then but like I was going on Instagram live, having people request songs and looking up my own tabs to be like, I don't know how to play that. Hold on. Let me look. And hoping that whoever tabbed it, right. And I got to say our fans did a pretty good job. Not that it's like, my songs are pretty easy, <laughs> easy to tab. <laughs> not, not a lot of crazy solos or uh, riffs to memorize when you're trying to learn a best X or candy heart song. Uh, definitely not. I would not be able to play that. So <laughs> My favorite part of working on writing music has always been knowing your limitations. Cause it's always like, it would be cool if there was like a really neat solo here, but I'm not going to expect myself to play a solo every night. So I'm going to have to cut that. Yeah. Luckily I have someone else who does those things. So it's like, okay, we'll put a solo in and then I can't play it. Well, I'm singing at the same time anyway. So just put it in the backing track. <laughs> Now, the last video, or I guess the, the big video for the song that you've put out already, was such a good clip and it took you a long time to put it together, I know. So have you given any thought to how to do like a quarantine music video? I know that those are starting to become a trend. Like, can we expect another video of some kind from you? Yeah, I haven't had time to really film something, but I really wanted to make a music video for um, my song, Good at Feeling Bad. And I'm going to do it. I just have to kind of find the time between like my job and like um, the album promotion. It's really like with all the album promotion and stuff, I haven't had time to do anything really else. And the last time I made a music video all by myself was the one for um, Girlfriend. And it took me quite honestly, like two weeks of like straight only working on that. Um, and I know that's how long music videos take, especially if you're doing like a stop motion one, but those are what my capabilities are. So it would be like some kind of lyric video thing, kind of like that too. Um, and my equipment, some of my equipment like for that is still in Brooklyn. So, and I'm not in Brooklyn right now. I'm in Jersey quarantined here so like it, there's gonna be something but it might be like after the album comes out uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine i think that you have time for it because people are home for a while now so you might as well take your time make something that you really love i mean i i, I also feel like i'm kind of a perfectionist with stuff or at least the older i get the more I, I tend to be a perfectionist about things so like everything i make now i'm like how do i make this as good as it can possibly become and it gets increasingly more time consuming to do that, which is, I mean, I guess it's obvious, but like the, the yeah. show that I'm, the, the podcast working on right now, like it's, it's recorded and it's being edited and now we're like, okay, well now let's add all these little bits and clips and interject all these things to make it even better. And it's like, oh my God, it's going to take so much time. And I just, I just want to give it to people. It's, it's a real, it's a real, uh, like give and take with me like I want to give it to people almost as bad if not more than I want to make it better all the time and it's really hard to find that balance I think I've worked really hard to learn how to just let that stuff go because you know when we first started recording in a studio and stuff it's like we only had a certain amount of time that was it and we could not go back and we could not do more and now as like a DIY artist I am I mean, we've always been super DIY, but like our recording process wasn't. And now it is where I'm like hiring someone for like at 
bottom of the barrel, like, you know, I can't afford that much. And, and I'm just trying to be like, whatever you can do for this amount of money in this amount of time, we got to get it going. So I've learned to just like let stuff go. Cause usually other people don't notice. It's just like, I notice cause they can't read what's in my brain. So just like I'm sure with your podcast, no one would notice if the stuff that you're thinking of adding was not there. Yeah, I was watching a, a video from the Punk Rock NBA on YouTube and he was talking about how at some point he stopped adding all these like little in jokes and clips to his YouTube videos and it didn't change the amount of people that watched them or how long people watched them because he realized that a lot of people just listened to it and they didn't even notice that there was like a clip on the screen or something like that. And it made yeah. me think like how much of like what we think needs to be there doesn't actually need to be there. Like what is the not the bare minimum, but like, what is it that people expect and how do you find what that level is and then not do two times as much? Exactly. Well, how has your creativity been during this time? Because you and I talk about it a lot, but most people probably don't know. So what has it been like for you finding a creative groove if you have, like how long did it take you once this all set in to be like, I'm going to, I guess I should keep making things because that's what I do. Like 30 seconds. Um, I, <laughs> I uh, was having a problem where, and you know, my bandmate said like, this is just how you are. Like if you don't have to, if you don't have to make something, if there's no reason for you to create something because it can't go out, you just won't be able to do it. And you'll be able to do it again when there's the need for it, when it's going to happen. Like when you have to do it, it will happen. But I haven't been able to really write anything that I like um, since I wrote the last album, which was a year ago, like this month, I think I finished it this month last year. So I haven't been able to write anything I liked. And then in quarantine, I just started writing stuff that I really do kind of like. Um, and I'm getting there. I haven't really written something yet that I feel like is, uh, cause there's always that one song where I, where I write part of it and I'm like, that's a song now I'm going to write an album, but I haven't found that song, but I think I'm very around that song. Um, so I think it'll happen soon. I think, I don't know, just like, cause I changed my whole scenery, you know, I went back home and I quarantined alone for two weeks. So I didn't like get anybody sick if I was. And during that time, I just really started writing again and it helped. Now I, I moved again, so I don't know how much I'm going to write at my sister's house, but you know, we'll see. I mean, that's like the great pop rock, pop punk journey is to eventually go back to go back home and then write an album about returning home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was not really a, yeah not that inspiring but it does put me back in that mindset of like where I wrote some some of my songs for what did I write there I don't even remember I definitely wrote something there oh I remember the first thing that we recorded um not the demos but everything's amazing we recorded that halfway in the room that I was staying in so I guess that's inspiring. I was sleeping next to the drum set. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's punk rock to a T right there. And this is, this is like so many songs about, you know, waking up in your childhood bedroom or realizing how much things have changed. But it's interesting because you spent so many years on the road writing songs about experiences on the road or thoughts you had while traveling. And now you're about to release a CP that's a lot more introspective in a lot of ways, I think. And here you find yourself in a situation where almost being forced to be more introspective. Like the last few was like, this is what I want to write about now. And now life is like, this is all there is to write about. Look inside what's going on. Yeah. There's nothing I, cause the way that I write is always, I'm like, okay, I have no inspiration. I'm really bored. I'm going to go out all night. have a lot of fun. See what happens and see if I, if there's anything there that I can write about it when I wake up or like, you know, a week from then once I processed up that night and was no longer hungover or whatever. Um, but now it's just like, I have to think about things that have happened in the past and try and process them more. Like you're absolutely right. It's definitely much more introspective because I'm not doing anything. 
now you're opening all those wounds that you've been trying you, you almost have to open the old wounds and be like, oh, I know I've been avoiding thinking of processing these things for years and now I have no other choice. I, I think that already happened to me when I got home from tour and just stayed home. <laughs> it really forces you to like, be like, okay, what do I do now that like I have to deal with issues and I can't just go to the next city and it's like respawning in a video game where nothing bad happened. I'm interested to see what the, the New Jersey influence on the new material will be. So it's, it's a different vibe than New York overall. No, New York is still, I think, I live so close. The part of Jersey I live in is so close to New York that it's not like a Bruce Springsteen-y, you know what I mean? Like that vibe of like working class or whatever. Like, you know, I'm a writer who works at home, so I am blessed and privileged and don't have that experience. So you're still just a little bit of Carrie Bradshaw, even though you're in New Jersey? Like so much. Like so much that I can never relate to sex in the city and I'm like this is insane how could someone like no one lives like this and then this year I was like oh shit I'm like a poorer version of that it's not that fun it's a little fun I think you could totally sell that tv show it's just it's just it's just girls meet sex in the city it's just broke girls and sex in the city it's fine it's perfect yeah (laughs) Well, let me ask you this. What are you looking forward to most with getting this record out? I mean, other than just, I know you've been sitting on it for a while. I feel like you and I have been talking about the music for over a year at this point. So being on the cusp of it is what's the thing you're most looking forward to? Is it just having it out in the world or is it, I get like that listening party where you can see how people are reacting to it and talk to people about it. Like what's the, what's really driving you to the 22nd now? I really look forward to like seeing what people think about it and if they really like it and stuff. And that was always like a big thing back when I was doing Candy Hearts because like we have a lot of visibility. And so the day that I released a song, it was just like an onslaught of messages all day. And I like, that's the only thing that I did. Like I couldn't do anything else. It was just like so many comments and I love that. It's perhaps a little self-indulgent, but I love that. And this, time you know we don't have as much visibility because we don't have that same platform with this like newer version of us and um i am just looking forward to seeing like who listens are there people listening will they like it it sounds like quite different from what we've done in the past um i know two of the six songs are already out but there's still four people haven't heard of of yet four i don't know how many how many out three are out two are out i don't know what's happening (laughs) there's some amount of music yet to be released yeah i don't i keep forgetting how many songs are on it because i have like i had like that whole album's worth of songs and i'm like you know what i want to wait and just only release some of them and so now i'm like which ones i have no idea Well, I, I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. Now that you ask me now, I'm second guessing myself that if I say it here, I'll be I'll be. I honest. don't know. I know. I'm trying to think and I have no idea. Because it's always like one or two. That, there's like one that I always forget about and I, I don't know. Whatever. I think it's six. And if it's not six, then it's five. But there is more music to be heard. People will hear us in for the first time. I mean, I'm excited about it. I've obviously, I've heard it. It's great. I tell people it's great all the time. And, uh, <laughs> I pre-ordered my copy. I'll get it. People can get a copy uh, from where, where are the two pre-orders? There's no sleep records here in the States. They have a t-shirt. Yeah. Thank you. What's going on? What's the other one? Uh, in the UK, it's through Alcopop. I know that because of the co- like coronavirus, um, the vinyl is going to be delayed. So you're going to get that a little late, but you will, you should get a download and like immediately or something. Um, but yeah, it's Alco Pop in the UK through their store and there's like a t-shirt there package, like a different one than the one we have in the States. Um, I designed both t-shirts and then no sleep. Amazing. And I'm excited for people to hear. I'm excited to be able to talk to people about it without only talking about Gaptooth. I feel like, I feel like I've talked that song into the ground. I've promoted it enough. (laughs) 
I need, I, I'm I need starting to get texture. a little sick of that one too. <laughs> <laughs> like it's been, uh, I, I keep a, a couple of Spotify playlists that I go to all the time, but that's one that's always on my things. And I'm like, I'm like, I, you know, I love this song, but I, I need another, I need another song. I do the same thing with Ben and you, me all the time. Cause we're like, I'll have listened to a song so many times that I'm like, can you just give me something new that I easily have access to that I can start listening to on a regular basis? I'm like kind of the opposite unless it's myself. I just listen to the same song over and over and over and over again to the point where it's like, if I go somewhere and I like a song, I'll just listen to that song the whole time until I get there. Like, even if it takes me half an hour and I'll just do it the same thing on the way home and I'll just be doing that. And, um, I don't have as much tolerance for my own, for my own music, except I was listening to my album quite a bit actually, which is something I haven't done before, but when we had just finished it and I was kind of shopping around labels and seeing like what I was going to do, how I was going to release it, which songs to release. I was listening to it so much and I'm just really excited for people to hear there are two songs on it that are not out yet that are just like totally different from what I normally do. And I'm just like really interested to see if people are like, cause I sent it to one of my friends who's like a music critic and he was like, not like a bad, like, huh? He was like, this is like wild. And I think really good. And he definitely liked it, but he was like, this is just, there's a lot here. That's like unexpected. I think that that's a good uh, summary of the entire release as a whole. It's, it's, it's unexpected in good ways. I do, and I know you appreciate this because you read about music too. I do love the industry dance of how you tell someone that you're not sure about something where you're like, oh, it's, it's interesting. It's provocative. It's, it's definitely different. And I think- I know, I love that. Yeah, it's like that trying to find the word to be like, I don't know. Um, At least the people in my inner circle- you know, they're like, no, like when I, when I released the same person, when I released, um, all the ways you let me down was like, no, why'd you make this? This is not as good as your other one. You lost all your soul. And I was like, how dare you? You're totally wrong. I did not. This is exactly what I wanted to make. And then in retrospect, I listened and I was like, no, actually I see where you're coming from. <laughs> not that I don't like that record. I love that record. But like, I, I got what he was saying. The shortcomings were. Absolutely. And we, I hit that recently with uh, Ben working on the new Yumi stuff because he'll send me some mornings I'll wake up and I'll have four voice memos at like seven in the morning. And he'll be like, I wrote a song this morning. And I'll be like, I mean, I think we can keep like this line, but it is, it is like a, but that's how you know you're, you've reached a true level of friendship when you can be like, listen, I understand that this is a part of your soul you're sharing with me, but I have to tell you that this is not the best part of your soul. Well, how married to it could he be if you wrote it in 20 minutes? (laughs) <laughs> sometimes the 20 like, minute songs are like the biggest songs no no no. i know you might love it but like you i feel like when you write a song in in 20 minutes or whatever you you might love it and be like this is the hit this is it whatever but you're not like you're not like deeply deeply attached you know in the same way you are to something that took you a really long time to work on whereas if someone like you just shoot off your first idea to someone and they're like oh maybe you should change this it's not like what you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I mean, sometimes I do encounter people who'll be like, I've worked on this record for the last four years. And you're like, I don't know how to tell you that you might need to work on it a little that- bit more. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my biggest fear. Like if someone starts starts pitch- sharing me something that they've been like passionately working on and it, it's like longer than a several weeks or a couple of months, my first thought is like, oh, I hope it's good. Like, I really hope that whatever you're about to hit play on is good. Because I always picture like there's a scene and we just watched Dewey Cox in our movie club where he's been working on the same song. That's my favorite. I love that movie. Yeah. So like when he gets to the big studio and he can't figure out that song and they're like, it's been months, Dewey. And it, this isn't even a song anymore. I sometimes, I'm always like, this is always what I'm anticipating when someone's like, this has been the last. I'm always worried life. that that would happen. Like if you, if you mess with stuff for so long and you don't take that break, it does become like, you're like, wait, this isn't even like a, a song anymore. What is this? What is happening? 10,000 didgeridoos. 
<laughs> yeah, this this isn't even a song anymore. What is this? Is this an album? What are we doing here? Is this just, just one song? <laughs> How are you going to make more songs that sound like this song? We don't have six years to get an album out. Um, no, yes, those are those are a constant fear. So even like with you, I remember when you first started sharing with me your best deck stuff, you were like, I've been working on this for a long time, I'm doing this. That's my initial fear in my heart. It's like, man, I hope it's so good because I don't want her to, I don't have to be like, how long have you been working on this? well you know it's an experiment you know i feel like i'm confident enough in it though that i wouldn't that would that would not never have happened that would not like that would never happen Mm -hmm. like there are things that i've definitely sent you where i'm like oh i wrote this today i don't know what do you think (laughs) you know what i mean but the best ones I'm, i'm fairly confident that the stuff that's like recorded and i've and mixed and mastered and all that that like it wouldn't be like, oh, this is terrible to someone. They might mm-hmm. think, oh, this is like fine. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, I like to have that hope too. I, I think a lot of the time I'm like, do, how much do I, gen- I have to ask myself, do I genuinely love this or have I spent three months listening to it every single day, several times a day? And I honestly can't separate life without this from life with this song anymore it's just it just is it's omnipresent yeah. in my existence well we've been like uh for for you me we do a lot of memes for the songs and i we keep using the same new song over and over again and like i've heard the first 30 seconds of the li- latest single a billion times this year and at this point i'm like i don't even know if it's good anymore i just know that i can't imagine life without this song <laughs> it's it's not i think that's when i decided i needed to finally release the album um, cause I was like really pushing around for like a day. I was like, uh, I was like, I don't know. Like I hired my publicist and everything. And I was like, I don't know when to release it, what time. And then it all got pushed back because of me a, a lot, because a little bit because of me, a little bit because of other things where I just could not get my stuff, like all the promotional stuff together. I couldn't get the music, I couldn't get everything together in time. And, um, I was, it, it was like to the point where I was just like, I don't even know if this is good anymore because I've listened to it so many times that I, can't, I just have no vibes about it that are like unadulterated. So like, it needs to go out. It's just like, it needs to go. Yes. You're just like, it's just, this is just, it's not even a part of you anymore. It's like, I just, I accept this as a thing that exists now and I need the external interactions with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad that I'm glad that we can relate to that. We're so inside baseball in the conversation now. It's great. Um, <laughs> so the EP, let's bring it all the way home. EP is out May 22nd, everywhere, streaming everywhere. What's the details on the listening party? When is that taking place? May 22nd. The Good hour time. at which it's taking place is something I just sent an email this morning being like, uh, I don't know. Can you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> What well, time's normal for people? Because my life is not mm. is not not a normal schedule. Yeah, this After- is the earliest that I've been up <laughs> in months. Yeah. I've been trying to have a healthier schedule, so I'm not working until midnight or like at two in the morning. Like I don't know, tinkering on guitar and like whatever. Like I'm trying to now. Before I was trying to join society. And be Mm -hmm. like, okay, everyone I know works until like six. So like, if I want to see them, I have to be able to be off of work then. And I have to be able to be awake and like showered and like ready to go. But now without society being around, there's no society to join. So like, I'm back Mm -hmm. to being bad. But being at my sister's is good because her and her husband have a very normal schedule. So they do not allow me to have like, a whacked one and they'll like throw the dog in my room at like 9 30. Be yes. like, wake her up. <laughs> the pros of having siblings. I wouldn't know, but I imagine that that's yeah. what Oh no, you're an only child. I am. How did I not know that? You I don't, don't seem like an only child. Well thanks. <laughs> I don't I don't know what that means, but thanks. <laughs> no, it's just like I feel like this is it's probably totally off because I love my only child friends, but I don't know, you have like this, uh, no, maybe it does make sense because you really try to like keep your connections with other people in a way that like other people don't. 
So maybe it can go one of two ways if you're an only child. Where you're used to being alone, so you don't bother. Or you're so used to being alone that you don't want to be, so you try really hard to yes. keep your relationships with other people. Yeah, it's, it's a fine I, It's like balance. such a good thing. I mean, <laughs> it's, a, it's a thing. I don't know if it's always good, but it is definitely... Uh, no, it's definitely my- a good thing to invest in your relationships. <laughs> a lot of most of my no one has to, of, on one side at least <laughs> most of my good friends are also only children through no fault of our own but we call it we always say that there's like an existential loneliness that only children understand because we're just like we're just alone in this thing we don't have a partner in crime that we grew up with um so we attract one another i, I know that, that must be i have a twin sister so it's like i've literally never ever existed by myself ever <laughs> <laughs> i didn't even know that so. you, i didn't know your sister was your twin so we're both learning something yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. Well, I think that I, I've definitely kept you long enough. You can get back to your Vanderpump rules. I appreciate you working out to get on Zoom with me today. That was, uh, this, is a, this is a whole experiment, but I felt like everyone's home. We might as well try doing things this way. This for is a so change. super fun. I know. And I know how much you hate FaceTime. So like, this is a big step for us. This is like a good thing. I'm getting more okay with it because I like had to be because people want to but yeah generally i do but if it's for a purpose <laughs> i don't hate it like i'm going like i'm going running kind of i mean i haven't gone in two weeks but i have started because it's like going outside with a purpose i can't go outside without a purpose true and true. i need to create a purpose because you can't go outside for anything else <laughs> mm-hmm. i uh well i got the shoes i haven't actually done the uh the exercise element of it, but I did get the new shoes. So I got the shoes and went a couple of times after I got the shoes and that's kind of it, but I'm going to start again. It was just bad weather. Yeah. I mean, that's what I, I mean, obviously that's what I say too. I, every day I'm like, I don't know. It seems a little, it seems a little cold today. A little chilly. It's a little brisk. I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't want to risk There's a getting... fine window of between where it's like too hot and then too yeah. cold. There's mm-hmm. just a small window mm-hmm. where running is appropriate. Yeah, and I'm just waiting for my window. I'm just waiting for the window. That's all I'm waiting for. But thank you for doing this. I hope you have so much fun today. Not like I probably won't talk to you again throughout the day, but to give, True. Everyone, to give everyone else an official goodbye. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for a little bit. Thank you for having me.